we think that there's a real opportunity for brands to get into that mix. And though they have been historically and continue to, to find ways to work with uh, artists and consumers uh, connecting them, um, there's still a huge gap in, in, in sort of what they can do. So a quick kind of history um, of what's happened to the music business. I don't know which screen to look at here when I do this. But um, it peaked. The music business peaked in 1999, 2000 um, at over $13 billion in the US in sales. Uh, the average household spent almost $12 a month on music at that point. That number has since fallen to under $5 per month per household. Um, this is a slide that you know, anybody who's familiar with the music business has seen a thousand times, and I, I think it basically has, it's, it's, it has a numbing effect. Nobody really responds to it anymore if you've been in the music business for a while. Um, in fact, if you look at the slide, obviously the majority of, or all of the decreases happened in the CD business, what the physical business in the, in the music business is the CD business. Um, digital grew, started growing in the early 2000s. Legitimate legal digital music services started to grow, uh, most notably iTunes. But as you can see, uh, the digital business is not, has not really um, made up for the, for the loss uh, in CD sales. And in fact, it's trending, it's growing, it's trending slowly, but it doesn't look like it's going to really make up for that decline anytime soon. Um, what you find in the music business, actually, is that some people have gotten to the point where they, they're pretty fatalistic about it. They, they view the digital business that exists today, mostly downloads, as something to protect and something that they're very wary of innovation in the business sometimes at the expense of that business. And we at Spotify and a lot of other sort of innovative music companies believe in fact that if you really want to grow the business, you're not going to do it protecting the current services and the current trends, but rather attacking the real opportunity, which is this huge loss uh, that's happened since piracy uh, came about. And we think that there's a huge role for brands to play in bringing the business back to its peak. So when you think about how um, labels and artists view the value of their content and their creations, it used to be pretty simple. You sold a record, you sold an album, um, that album was worth around $15, sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less to a consumer. Uh, and that was it. Uh, the, the record business grew around marketing artists, promoting artists, and then distributing CDs and making sure that um, everybody got rich. Um, piracy obviously changed all of that. But in the wake of piracy, a legitimate music, digital music business did form. The problem was it formed in an extraordinarily fragmented way. Um, iTunes is obviously the biggest music, digital music service, but it's still only a fraction of the total consumption uh, that, that is out there uh, in the world today. And so you have people who buy legitimately from iTunes, but you still have a lot of people who illegally download music on BitTorrent or on Mediafire, or they rip MP3s from YouTube. YouTube is, of, of course, also a huge music streaming service in this day and age, and Pandora has 40 million users listening to personalized music as if it was their iPods on shuffle. Um, then you have illegal streaming services like GrooveShark. And all of these are competing, complementing, supplementing in a way that's very difficult for people to assess. And when you think about the value of a unit of music in this world, you know, an iTunes download is $1.29. A Pandora Stream is worth one-tenth of a penny to the record business. Uh, BitTorrent is worth nothing. Um, it's hard for the record business to really effectively assign a value to each one of these units, um, not knowing exactly how to compare a stream to a download to an album. Uh, so what they've been forced to do, what's been the real kind of sea change in the last couple of years, is that the record business has said, OK, well, instead of looking at what the value of a stream is or what the value of a track is, uh, we need to look at what the value of one of our consumers is. What's the value of a music fan? 